We're getting closer. In this episode, we're giving you an update on the front area of our RV. Well, because we work full time from the road, having a great ergonomic workspace is really important to both of us. We knew that when we bought CC that we were going to have to set up a workspace in the living space. It wasn't necessarily that we were gonna keep this, the workstation here, but we did agree all on that at the end of the day because this is the least obtrusive in the van because it's all about that ease of living. And I want them at some point to try and switch off from RV love and you know just have some downtime. So this actually, ended up being the perfect spot and that was a great IKEA investment guys that was a real believe it or not it's perfect I like I love their designers we really like having windows from our seats because our views change all the time I mean that's that's really living the life right yeah. like I'm a bit jealous <laughs> So our secondary workstation is actually the driver's seat because this is an area that doesn't normally get used a lot when we're stationary. Obviously you can turn the chair around when you have a group and still be a part of a party or something, but when it's not in that being used for a big group setting, you can just turn this chair around and I have a computer. This isn't finished yet, but um, we plan on putting the actual laptop up here and then having the wireless keyboard and wireless mouse on a lap desk that I can just do all my controls with still having very good ergonomics. So this will be a great dedicated workspace that I can leave set up all the time and then just turn the chair around when we have guests. And as for the cabinets, we actually originally didn't think we we're gonna be making very substantial changes at all because the coach is made of very solid wood, all the cabinetry and all the cabinet doors. And figured because it was already white, they just needed a good little clean down, a nice fresh of coat of white paint, and we'd be good to go. We didn't think it was really going to be that big of a job at all. And then I came here <laughs> and said, actually, guys, got another plan, right? Because what, whilst the cabinets were in great nick, they were just, they weren't modern and clean look. So I suggested that we turn the cupboards around because that saved on money. We didn't have to buy new cabinetry. It was a lot of work, but how good guys does that look? Can you shut that now for us, Jules? To that really nice, clean, modern look that we were after. It's been a, a big, big job, but. Yeah, well, and when she first suggested, I was like, wow, that sounds so cool. It's really contemporary, but is it <laughs> doable, right? Because these hinges are one thing and they are reversible. So I started looking at the, the reversible, then you got to start thinking, are they gonna line up with each other? You know, when you change all the poles, you have to fill in all that. And then we had to get them in a way that we would cut them down, because when you flip them, now the hinge has to be exposed. But it, we all came to the agreement that we actually really like this exposed look of the hinge. So yeah. um, it did come together. There was uh, definitely some nervousness about whether or not it was gonna be able to be pulled off, but love how it turned out. That's so cool, Mark. And I think Mark counted, was it 40 cupboards? Yeah. You have 80 cuts and 40 rehangs and, 40 new handles to go on. Handles are still to go on, guys, but yep. we're nearly there. <laughs> yeah. Well, they say the kitchen is the heart of the homes, and it's pretty much the heart of our RV as well. One thing you really wanted to change was change the microwave, even though it was fairly new, to a convection microwave, so I could actually bake and use it like a regular oven. And one thing you may remember as a big, big eyesore in CC when we first bought her was his big crack in this Korean top over the range top. So we knew that had to go, and we just thought the simplest way to replace that with a stainless steel cover instead, which would serve two purposes. One, it would look great. We knew we were never going to be able to match the Corian, but two, we can actually use this as a chopping board, but this is a really heavy grade stainless steel, which doesn't bow at all. So you can use it for food prep, as well as just keeping a nice, clean, flat countertop. Plus yeah. it just looks awesome. It ties in yeah. with all the other stainless steel appliances, you mm -hmm. know, the new convection oven, 
brand new residential refrigerator that Yay! we brought in. Which was, when you were talking about eyesores, I thought you were actually going to be talking about the beveled mirrors. Oh, I, I almost the, forgot. The, yeah, how could I forget so the mirrors? Forget. Oh my God. I was truly delighted to hear that the guys could actually have real tile. So we were actually able to get these wonderful porcelain marble tiles, which mm -hmm. just amps this van up beyond. It really enters the, the game of lux. You know, there is nothing average now about CC with a marble backsplash. And what I also wanted to do was to link in the stories of the marble and again, like the earthiness of the floor. So I was really excited about this. Nobody else is probably excited, but I painted under I the cat. <laughs> I wasn't initially, I was like, really yeah. yeah, we were yeah, sure really about it. I don't know. Really see it now, yeah, it so awesome. just that small detail, we've painted underneath here black so that it just has that really sexy edge that we're just trying to bring. And of course, links in with the blackboard here. Oh, nicely done, you guys. You should be on sale of the century. So this is really amazing and it was really important important to me to have that black wall with all the white and the squareness to actually bring in that really contemporary styled edge and it may not seem much but it really makes this whole space bounce but the double win of this is that this is a primer that has a magnetic structure in it so you can stick magnets on there and then we paint it over with blackboard paint so you can also do like chalk stuff like I love my hubby please bring me a cup of tea in bed <laughs> and um, um, and it just looks amazing. So really delighted with how the kitchen's turned out. And we still do have to put the black handles on uh, and that's just going to amp it up completely. I don't know, guys, if you can see down here, but again, keeping with that really stylized end, I painted the black kickboard here. So again, it just looks very, very sophisticated and very thought about rather than just the white kickboard. So, yeah. Well, and it makes the cupboards look like they're floating. Exactly. Exactly, Mark, yeah. exactly, Mark. And that's the thing that makes the space look much more modern. And she's still really 20 years old with 20 year old cupboards, but just turned around. And just lastly, which you mentioned, Jules, with the handles, which I think I need to talk about as well, was, you know, the handles were unobtrusive, the brush nickel. Right. And I was really keen from day one with the, the black accents to have really straight, clean black handles. Yeah. And now that the black trim and the accents are in, it's just going to be phenomenal. Can't wait to get those on. Yeah. Hey, Mark. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry, no. <laughs> There's one more final piece in the kitchen that we wanted to share that we've decided to do, and that is mount another stainless steel <laughs> bench right here because as you can see on this kitchen bench there's very little space here to put any dishes. This is going to be great as a prep space even if we have friends over for dinner you can have like a little buffet you can oh, have food out here. That. Isn't that a great <laughs> idea? That idea Jules. Or you know if we are doing some videos then it makes it easier to be able to film what's going on right here. So this has been custom made as was the range top cover in stainless steel, both custom made yeah. and beautiful this one, job. This custom was even more because this was a more of a design. That one was, you know, the exact right shape and with a bend, but this one has a lot of bends and I designed this so that this side here, I'm building a bracket here so that when it mounts, it slides under the bracket here. It has this screwed on leg here for when it's supported. But then when we're not using it and when the slide comes in, we don't want this blocking. So we just removed that leg and we had it designed with this hook edge on here so that with that same bracket on the wall, it'll just set on there and hang while we're traveling. So it's completely out of the way when it's not being used. And yet it's a great, huge expansion of the kitchen when we want it. That is Very seriously cool. impressive, Mark. Very impressive. Yeah, yeah. You would join my team. Yeah. When we moved into CC, first thing we did was measure up what was going to be possible here. Yeah, that was because it's a very tight fit. You, you have to be very specific about the depth of the fridge, mm -hmm. but also, you know, of course, the height. But the width was critical, too, because right on this side of the fridge, there's the slide out that comes in and completely blocks off this space. And we wanted to leave enough room on this side of the fridge to mount a fireplace as well. So we had to be very mindful of the depth of that direction and this direction. But we're so excited to have this because we went from an eight cubic foot propane electric fridge to a full on 18 cubic foot residential fridge that is fantastic. So there's a better accessibility for Julie too. 
Ice cream. Ice maker in the freezer. We can keep ice cream and lots of room for food, drinks, everything you could want. This runs off our lithium batteries and powered by solar. So we don't have any issues at all with a residential refrigerator living off the grid. And I know that's a big concern for a lot of RVs and that is one of the advantages of an RV fridge. But you can camp off grid with a residential refrigerator if you've got the right batteries to power it. Yeah. And it also helps to turn off the ice maker at night. <laughs> yeah, that takes up a lot of energy. This living area is really important. I want to just talk about this amazing sofa. When I saw it, I wasn't that keen on it. Um, but why I was convinced was its beautiful dual purpose of being a bed, its storage. It's really comfortable. And now when I add some throws and some like pillows, it's going to be a really great piece. But the most amazing thing in the living area was when you walked in, there was a wall of, of <laughs> paned mirrors. I could not wait to get those panes off <laughs> and actually put on wallpaper. You can see that we've put on there and then the fireplace. Um, and with the fireplace, I needed to link in the black. And when I saw the images from Jules and Mark, this above here was was covered with fabric that was the old upholstery. <laughs> it's very dated. So I was so excited to pull it off and paint it black just to give it that really modern edge and it's sort of expansive with the eye and then the black draws up into the kitchen area mm. and with the black of the fireplace and it leaks subtly into the black hues in the floor so um yeah and the yeah. windows, and and the windows, windows of course yeah mark and talking about windows guys um these were fantastic these valances and window boxes but they had the horrible old brown and yellow dated you know 20 year old fabric above so what I did was I just upholstered the existing fabric over. I bought these curtains because I loved the mix of the blues, which is the tones we're bringing in, the blues and the greys that Jules really wanted as well, um, to lighten it up and make it feel nice and bright and happy. And Danelle and I, we were the team of two that look, spent over two days upholstering, but such a great job and a really cheap way to upcycle um, a, a really ugly existing valance. Yeah, we've done a really great job of reusing as many of the mm -hmm. elements as we can to yeah. really, like you said, upcycle stuff. Yeah. You know, use existing cupboards, use existing valances, but freshen them up and brighten them up. Totally. This used to be a standard dinette here, so I completely changed the, the landscape and the design. So this area here was really important with the design. I wanted it to appear more spacious and open and not so RV. That's yeah. really what I'm striving for here as a designer is to make this feel like a home, like like an apartment mm -hmm. but with the function that it is an RV. We did the L design and uh, that was really important to me because I know Jules loves sitting in a corner with her feet up, relaxing. So this, when you walk in the van now, it's really open and spacious. It's like living, kitchen, dining, all in one. And I, there's masses of storage in there. Yeah. So as for flooring, we started off in the front area of this coach was all light gray carpet. It was actually in pretty decent shape for being 20 year old original carpet. And then the kitchen and the bathroom was ceramic tile and then the bedroom went back to that light gray carpet. I just had a vision of CC with more organicness, more movement, more warmth and texture. So that's why I was really keen on bringing in the brown. And right up until the time when Jules and I went to the flooring mm -hmm. shop, Jules thought it was gray. Yep. I waited until I got off that jet in LA and then flew to here to say to her, actually Jules, it's not gonna be gray at all because they pretty much picked out what they wanted yep. and were set to buy it that day. And it was like, not gonna happen. So um, luckily these guys are so cool to work with and they could see like, yeah, this has got a lot of validity. I like how resilient it is and I really like, it's easy to clean, like it's easy to lay and it feels nice even if you're bare feet and yeah. especially with, yeah. since we put the felt underneath it as well. That yeah. made a big difference, yeah. yeah. And it's and, waterproof. And also guys, like this was another consideration too because it's that type of flooring that with the movement, it moves. It's not pasted yeah. down. It's, it's got a lot of movement because it's just click clack together. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is really Very great. Very forgiving. Yeah. Yes. This took about 11, 11 hours. That's without yeah. the trim. Just laying the floor and the underlayment. So. Yeah. And that's no lunch break or tea break. He <laughs> no, that was actual through. working hours. He did, yeah. Yeah. Big, long, big long day. So lighting was the next thing to think about. And just to give you a sense, we had pretty traditional lighting throughout the RV. But one of the things when we left our home in Colorado is we sold our townhome and left this beautiful chandelier light 
fixture above the dining area that was actually a wedding gift from some friends. So it actually, aside from being beautiful and we loved it, it had some real sentimental meaning to us. So it was a little sad leaving that chandelier behind in the townhome. But fortunately, some friends of ours that own the lighting studio gifted us with this gorgeous little mini version of that chandelier, which might sound a little crazy, right? Like in, living in an RV and putting in a chandelier. And I know many of you are probably sitting there going, what the heck are you thinking? But you know, if you've been following us for a while now, and if you haven't, we're more glampers rather than campers. So, you know, just because you <laughs> live the so RV life, there's no reason why you can't have a little bit of glamour or a little bit of glitz or a bit of fun or something that's a little bit different. We do like to think and live outside the box. I agree. It yeah. had to have that glamour, like just that, and it's gorgeous. Yeah. But you did something a little different. Yeah, so I think, um, you know, I was excited by this because I remembered that chandelier from their old home, which I really loved. And then to see it in here, I knew it would work really well. And then especially like linking it with the marble, that was important yeah. to me to have those two beautiful organics mix. So you can have bling and then stabilize it with something organic. Like the, the lighting was really inoffensive and simple, but it was dated. Mark was great. I said, can we just get rid of that light? And um, we have, and I'm putting something else on that wall, so. And it's not a light. But you know, I just want to say thanks to Mark for being so brave, because I know a lot of you men out there are thinking there's no way I'm gonna let my wife put a chandelier in the RV, and that's okay. Because this is our RV, we can have what we like. I just wanted to mention, if you're looking at home, um, Mark and I, when we installed this today, this is deliberate, the hang. So it, it's it's got that, so it gives it sort of a little bit of an eclectic, edgy, sort of New york -y vibe, rather than it just hanging straight down. That would be very, very sort of predictable. You have quite a few other lighting changes too. Yeah. We're actually mounting LED lights underneath the cabinets and we're gonna put those on a dimmer so we can completely control the light. We're also being mindful of the temperature or the color of the light so mm -hmm. that we can change the mood in the mm -hmm. coach. We're also changing all the ceiling lights to LED as well because all the ceiling lights are currently a fluorescent bulbs and they're not only ugly, they are also really a lot less efficient than mm. LED too. The moment yeah. they're these awful, ugly, plastic <laughs> RV covers that... Well, when the ones have the covers... Well, some some, fall, covers some have just fallen <laughs> off, a couple are cracked and broken. Yeah, we think we have a really good solution for that. That has not been completed yet, so hopefully it turns <laughs> out. But yeah, we plan on mounting some LED puck lights into some wooden planks that we will match with the paint with the cover, yeah. so they'll kind of blend in but also edge up at the same time. I'm really excited about putting those light fixtures in. We're going to do those throughout. Guys, I wanted to talk about all the paint that was involved in transforming the RV. But more than just the paint, which Mark will talk about because he was the great master at arms, the painter that did everything. Um, what I wanted to talk about was the colours and what happens when we bring different colours of paint into a space. What I decided to do was to paint this trim area here um, and then link in the black with underneath the cabinetry um, so that there's just that real sophisticated cutting edge look and then also the baseboards around here so that the cupboards look like they're floating. Using the black, um, it was also really important for me to get this color tone right because this is the launching pad for the entire van, believe it or not. So with the blues and the greys, that then linked into this beautiful shimmery silver wallpaper. Um, so we could have the black fireplace actually make sense. Otherwise it was just gonna be a black fireplace sitting on a wall. So all of these things really flow with the symmetry. So even with the silver of the chandelier, the gray linking in with the fabric, and then the gray and the silver in the wallpaper, and then the black, and then linking up with the eye, with the marble and the gray and the movement and the flow. It's really important to get your color right. So um, I am delighted with how it's all gone. And then of course, with the brown bouncing from from the floor, it's just a really good anchor and a really good stabilization for all the other colors that we've added. Throughout the van, we've actually done some other colors as well, just for a little bit of um, pop of surprise. Yeah. Hey, Jules. Well, it is a lot of hours involved in painting this, but thank goodness this was originally white cabinetry that drastically reduced the amount of work in painting the cabinets because we did not have to paint inside. Oh, the can you imagine? Oh. Can well, you it imagine? It was still a lot of work it painting yeah. all of the cabinets white on white. This was originally wallpaper that we just, Jane just said, just paint straight over the wallpaper. Because, it was like a white pearlescent. Yeah, because the wallpaper was stuck so well because it's such a well made van and I knew that that wasn't yeah. going to pull off. So we just painted straight over it. My dad used to do that in old properties. Well, it works. It does work. Yeah. And then also, what I wanted to say, just because you were talking about the whites, there are over 200 whites. So white is a big color. Mm. So uh, there's a lot of choice out there. 
I think it looks great, guys. Yeah. We're nearly there. <laughs> yeah.